take a high Q inverter. We said the size is going to be two and half, right? Now, some of you had a question: What if half is not allowed, right? What if half is not allowed in the technology? The point is, logical effort is independent of that gate size scaling. So, what I'll do is now I'll show you that if whether I take two and half, right, or whether I take. 1 and 4, you will get the same answer, okay. So, now this is my high skew inverter, let us say. I want to now calculate the pull up logical effort and this is my pull down logical effort. So, I am going to construct my reference inverters. So, what do I do if I am looking at pull up? then I ensure that PMOS transistor size remains the same, right. So, this 4 will just appear here and if that is 4 and I want the inverter to be a symmetric static CMOS inverter, the NMOS should be 2. So, this will give rise to the 2 here, right and therefore, what is the logical effort now? G pull up, it is 5 C divided by what? 6 C, right, so you get 5 by 6. Now, what about pull down? This is my reference inverter. What I am going to do is this one will appear here. Now, if this is one, what should be the CMOS? Two. And therefore, I get logical effort pulled down equals how much? Five by six. This is what we got yesterday, right? 5 by 6 and 5 by 3. Clearly, the pull down is greater than 1, pull up has been made less than 1. So, it does not matter what, whether I take 2 half, 1 4, 2 8, all of that is the same. Okay, clear? Any questions on the high skew inverters or high skew, low skew inverters? Okay. So, today we will look at some special functions. Okay. What I am going to do is first let me just quickly review the static CMOS implementation once. Okay. Let me take uh, NAND 2 again. What is the function that is being implemented in the pull down network? Y equals A B bar, A B bar because it is being pulled down to the 0, therefore I have to invert it, right. This is pull down. What is the pull up? A bar plus B bar. Clearly, y p d equals y pull up, right. This has to be consistent, okay. In general, 
if i have a pull down network and a pull up network then i can say that my y pull down is some f bar of a b you know or let me say a1 b, a2 am f bar because it is going to ground i have to invert that function and i am saying a1 a2 an because these are active high switches the switches turn on when the input goes high the general notation is this similarly if i want to write the pull up network it is some other function g of what ah a1 bar a2 bar and an bar what's the condition these two have to be the same y p d is equal to y p u both stacks have to implement the same function that's quite obvious right now the question is under what circumstances will both these stacks be a mirror image of each other i want my pmos stack to be a mirror image of the nmos stack which means that whatever input a1 is you know connected to an nmos transistor it is connected to a similar pmos transistor on top right so if the pmos was pmos stack was a mirror image of my nmos stack okay if pmos stack right or the pull up network let me say in general was a mirror image and mirror image because i am taking the mirror image about that x axis is going to ground i'm making it go to vdd that's all that's why i'm saying mirror image otherwise it's effectively the same stack right mirror image of the pull down network then what is the pull up function that is being implemented y p u is if the pull down network okay given ypd right given is f bar of a1 a2 an now dual of it but in terms of f and the a1 a1 bars what is it f of exactly this is nothing but f of a1 bar a2 bar an bar now we know our other constraint that the pull down function and pull up function have to be the same therefore f of a1 bar a2 bar an bar should be equal to f bar of a1 a2 a what does this mean it means that if i complement my inputs a1 becomes a1 bar a2 becomes a2 bar and so on then the output also becomes a complement what i am doing here is inputs are getting complemented what this is doing is output is getting complemented so if by complementing the inputs the output also gets complemented then i can make my pmos stack a mirror image of my nmos stack and that is what was given to you in the assignment where we said implement y equal to ab plus bc plus ca whole bar right so what is the advantage of this so 
you take y is equal to a b plus b c plus b a whole bar and we do and let us first do a vanilla static CMOS implementation of this right. Then you know I will simplify this further I will just say uh, a b plus c into a plus b. So, this will be C A B and I have another A and B here. Right? Now, what is the BMOS stack? If I were to do it in the original way, where the PMOS stack is just a dual of this NMOS stack. So, A and B have to be in parallel, there is a series there. So, I am going to put A. Then I have C in series with A and B, which means I am going to put C in parallel now with A and B in series, right. So, C A B, okay. So, can you size these transistors now? So, what should this PMOS sizing be? What is the worst stack size? How many transistors on the stack? 3. So, therefore, I need 666, right? So, therefore, this has to be 6, 6, 6, and 6, right? And therefore, this has to be 3. Clear. Now, let us check if this condition is satisfied where I can use the mirroring property, okay. So, what is the mirroring property? It simply says that if I complement the inputs, output should also become a complement, okay. So, you can work out this Boolean logic yourself by, you know, putting A bar, B bar, C bar, you worked it out, you will get the same function, okay. But I will show you the simpler way which is the truth table way A, B, C output Y 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1. Ah. So, what is this A, B plus B, C plus C, A right. If any two are 1 then you get output as 1 0, 0. 1, 0, 1, 1, 1. Clear? So, this is what my output y is min term of uh, this is a b plus b c plus c a. Of course, if you want the complement, then it is just the reverse, right. So, this is min terms of you take zeros 1. 0, 1, 2, 4, 0, 1, 2, 4. What is y bar? Min term of summation. Summation of 3, what? 4, 5, 6, 7, 7. Okay, this is y and y bar. Question now is if if I invert the inputs, will the output get inverted? So you look at 0, 0, 0. If you invert 0, 0, 0, what do you get? 7. So you will see that this 0 becomes 7. What about 1? 0, 0, 1. 
Huh? What do you get if you invert the inputs? 0, 0, 1 becomes that is 6 exactly. So, this 2, 0, 1, 0 becomes 1, 0, 1 which is 5 and of course, 0, 1, 1 if you invert you will get 1, 0, 0 which is 4. So, clearly by inverting the inputs, the output is getting inverted and therefore, I can apply the mirroring property here, clear. So, if I apply the mirroring property, the advantage is I can just, just replicate the NMOS stack. Now, the advantage is the NMOS stack has only two transistors on the stack. Correct. So, with mirror implementation, it would simply this whole thing would become what? Just a mirror image of this. See? A, B. And this is A, B again. So, what are the, what is the net size now for this? 4, this is 4, 4 and 4. Clearly, the logical effort on each input has come down now, right? This is the advantage. Now, it is not necessary that every time you replicate the NMOS stack, it is going to be better. In this one example, it happened to be like that. First of all, there are very few functions where this will hold, okay. And other function where it, where this holds is the tree input XOR. If I take y equals a XOR b XOR c, then on this again the mirroring property will hold. You can go verify it for yourself. Again write down the main terms, see what happens when you invert the inputs and see if the output gets inverted, right. There are very few functions where this can be done and it can be exploited very well. If that function is important, it turns out this function is very important because this is nothing but the carry out of your full adder. And the three input XOR is the sum of your full adder. And therefore, these two are very important functions in the ALU. And we are able to exploit this mirroring property beautifully in order to reduce the logical effort on these inputs. Any, any questions here? So, the key point, yeah. I will come to that later, yeah, okay. So, uh, so the key thing is if your PMOS stack is large and your PMOS, PMOS size therefore is going to be very large, your logical effort is going to be very high. You have no choice, right. Basically, the PMOS stack summary is, maybe I will just write it here, summary is PMOS can kill your logical effort and lot of effort will now be put in in order to optimize this PMOS stack. One such technique is this mirroring property, okay. 